Hello everyone, welcome to Geeks for Geeks. In this whole series of DFA NFA, we will be discussing about various topics associated with deterministic finite automata as well as non-deterministic finite automata. So my name is Choi and I will be guiding you throughout the series to achieve these concepts on DFA as well as NFA. Okay. So just the basic introduction that I am doing my MTech from IIT Madras. Currently I am in the second year and uh, we will be uh, discussing about uh, many things in the upcoming videos. Okay. So let us get started with our discussion point for specifically for this video. So we will be discussing about some basic terminologies related to DFA which are basically the prerequisitions to know and understand DFA. Okay. So we will be discussing about various symbols, alphabets, strings as well as languages. Okay. So yeah, we will be discussing about this uh, this thing, uh, symbol, alphabet, strings and languages as well as we will be uh, giving the basic introduction to DFA with the tuple structure. Okay, so firstly the basic introduction that is symbols. Okay, so symbols is basically an any sign, okay, any sign that will represent a single movement, okay. And we will be using the symbols in various phases of our uh, discussion of theory of computation, especially in DFA as well as in NFA. So symbols are any alphabet you can take. So A, B, C, D up to Z. Okay, any alphabet can be symbol. Any like alphabet in the small letters can also be symbols. There can be Greek alphabets. Okay, this can also be symbols as well as some numeric symbols can be there. Okay. So these are the different kinds of symbols and uh, what is alphabet? Alphabet is a set of symbol. Alphabet is basically um, written with this sign and it is basically a set of symbols like A, B, C. If in your specific task you have only, you are using only three symbols, then the set of symbols is called, will be called the alphabet. Okay. And uh, remember that alphabet is always, alphabet is always, you know, finite. Okay alphabet is always finite it cannot be infinite right and string is a sequence of symbols okay suppose we have an alphabet of a b okay so what are the strings can uh, we make okay so we can make uh, like a uh, length one string that can be a or b we can make length two string that can be a a a b or maybe b a b b okay so these are all the strings so string is basically a sequence of symbols right and language will be a set of strings okay so suppose i am uh, telling that a language where it is um, suppose the language over suppose alphabet set is a b okay and the language is what the length of uh, strings length of strings equal to 2 Okay, so it, it means that all the strings over this alphabet and with length 2 will be inside this language. Okay, so suppose just uh, for your uh, explanation, for the explanation, the language will be A, B, A, A, B, 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 A. Okay, so this is a finite set of strings and it is a language, right? So a language can be finite as well as infinite. Okay. So this example is of a finite language. Now uh, I can also uh, say a language. Suppose a language where a language starting with A. Okay, means all the strings, all the strings which are starting with symbol A will be inside this language. Correct. So the strings can be A maybe a a maybe a b maybe a a a okay and you can directly understand that it is the set of strings is going to be infinite right so it means that the language is also infinite okay now moving to the next part it is the length of string as well as the power set okay so first of all i told you about this thing right this symbol represents set of set of symbols right or in other words it is the alphabet okay now if i give the mod of this and in the power if i put something 2 
or 3 or any integer that will represent the length of the strings okay so this thing i mean here uh, the power is 2 so this is representing that strings strings of length 2 right strings of length 2 then again if i tell like this 3 then that means strings of length 3 over what is the set of symbols over the alphabet set this one sigma right over the alphabet set sigma now again uh, now comes our verb so this is the power right here we are using the powers and now there is a, uh, another thing that is instead of giving this uh, some integer in this power we can use star okay we can use star so star means that all the languages okay starting from zero starting from zero i mean starting from zero length strings to n length strings everything will be included okay and n is some it can be infinite or, or uh, uh, it can be finite also okay so uh, i mean every length strings will be included in this language right so basically it means that we can say that this is the superset right this is the superset of these sets okay this is the superset of this length 2 length 3 or maybe length 1 set okay now going forward let's give some architecture of finite automata okay so first of all finite automata is basically broadly divided to two parts okay so finite automata is broadly divided to two parts one is with output i mean if you use the finite automata with output then you, then for each input you will get some kind of outputs okay and there can be another type of finite automata that is without output okay it means that if you use this kind of automata then you won't get any output for the inputs okay and uh, with output is also having two basic types two basic type of machines one is the mure machine mure machine another one is the milli machine okay and without output is having broadly three types first one is the deterministic finite automata or in short dfa then comes non deterministic finite automata or nfa and epsilon non deterministic finite automata okay and in this playlist our main focus will be in this without output finite automatas okay means we will be discussing about dfa nfa as well as we will be also discussing about the non deterministic or i mean epsilon non deterministic finite automata okay so first starting with our dfa so basically here we will be discussing about um, mainly the dfa structure or tuples okay so we define or we represent a dfa or deterministic finite automata using five uh, symbols okay first is q sigma delta small q zero as well as f okay so first q is the set of states set of states this is this is i already told that it is the alphabets alphabet delta represent a set of production rules okay set of production rules i'll be explaining each of these terms in brief so don't worry q0 is basically the starting symbol and f is the set of final states okay so basically uh, with the with the certain example let's let's take the example this one okay uh, suppose i am drawing a finite automata deterministic finite automata where every string will be starting with the symbol a okay so it means that i mean in our alphabet suppose only two symbols are there a and b 
so from the initial state so this is our initial state suppose capital a so from the initial state if we get a small a then we will go to the final state okay from the initial state if we get a small a then we will go to the final state because our condition was that all the strings should be started by a okay and if we are getting a as a first symbol in the string then we will reach to the final state and in final state there can be multiple a's or b's okay so this a's or b's will come after the first symbol a okay so the first symbol of the string will be a after that anything can come and that won't be considered and we will be into the final state okay and suppose if the initial symbol is coming as b okay so that is violating our condition in our condition we told that initial symbol should be a but here suppose the initial symbol is coming as b then we will reach to some dead state and from the dead state we cannot get back it means that suppose we are getting some string that is starting with b that won't be accepted okay when the when a certain string will be accepted if by canning the whole string if we if we can reach to the final state starting from the initial state okay i mean here in our case suppose our final state is b and this dead state is c okay so for this case upon scanning a whole string starting from initial state a if we can reach to the final state b then we can say that okay this string has been accepted okay so now here here comes that for this dfa so this is a dfa okay this is a deterministic finite automata and for this dfa i will define all these five things okay so first of all q q is a, i told you it is a set of states okay set of all the states so how many state we have we have a b c here a is the initial state b is the final state as well as c is the dead state okay now alphabet structure we are we already told that our alphabet is a b okay now q0 is the initial state so for us the q0 is a okay a is our initial state and what is the set of final states so final state we have only one final state here so that is b okay so make sure that initial state can be only a single initial state is possible okay and final set can be i mean final state can be a set of states okay maybe this b c both are the final states it can be okay but for this case only b is the final state anyway now the last thing that is the production rule okay so first of all for dfa okay for dfa given any state okay so this a b i mean capital a capital b capital c these are the states okay so for given any state and any input here the small a and small b are the inputs so given any state and any inputs it should be defined okay the rule or the production should be defined what does it mean it means that i am in state a okay and i am getting a input small a okay so then in dfa it should be defined that by i mean if i am in capital a state and i am getting a small a as input then i will be reaching to capital b state okay and in this way for all of the this thing i mean states as well as inputs the production rules will be defined okay then only only in that case that will be called a dfa okay so it is a basic basically it is a difference between dfa as well as nfa in nfa it is non deterministic so i mean i'll show that for nfa this all the production rules may or may not be defined okay but dfa all of this set of production rules will be defined i mean for every state given any every input we can have some predefined way okay we can go to some uh, predefined uh, rule will be there by following that we can go to some another state right so this whole set of production rules is basically represented by delta okay so i hope that you are getting all the five tuple structure 
of DFA. Okay. Now that's up to this point. So in the next video, I will be coming up with multiple a set of examples based on DFA, and after completion of DFA, we will be starting non-deterministic finite automata. Thank you for joining.